Welcome back everybody. This week I'm gonna give you a comparison and discuss my thoughts on a couple of different sprayers that I've been using for a while. Before we get into it, I just wanna take a quick opportunity to say thank you to all of my subscribers. Uh, I just hit the 20,000 mark, really appreciate it. Uh, it's a big deal for me. And I'm just glad that there are that many people out there that feel like my videos are good enough to keep watching. So if you are one of my subscribers, thank you so much. And if you are not, it's not too late to hit the subscribe button. So let's go ahead and get into the video. The whole reason I'm doing this video is because I get a lot of questions on how I apply paints, finishes, um, if I really like the products that I've been using uh, in my Instagram videos. So today's video is just gonna be a comparison between those. And uh, I just wanna mention that I will be talking about a Home Right Finish Max sprayer because I had it for about two years. And of course, me being the dummy that I am, when I was cleaning out my garage, uh, I threw it out because I've used it for about two years and it was just done. And I was saving it specifically for this video. But unfortunately, I don't have it for this video, but I will still talk about it. We're gonna go ahead and begin with the Rockler HVLP sprayer that you see here. And what I'm gonna do first is discuss exactly how this is gonna come when you buy it and the components kind of that come with it. So with the Rockler, this is the paint sprayer itself, and then you have this large uh, blower unit here. Um, and this comes with a long hose, a fairly long power cable, and no kind of carrying case or anything like that. It just comes uh, with these pieces here. Now taking a look at the Graco sprayer, this is the Graco 360 DSP. So it's a, the dual speed model and they have multiple different models. This is actually one of the least expensive models. It comes, everything you see here, and then it comes with this nice travel bag, which does come with replaceable cups, which we'll kind of talk about here uh, once we get into the features of the guns. And then they actually also come with uh, paint strainers, which is kind of nice. And then these can just be bought for very inexpensive from any of your local um, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, anywhere that sells the, the Graco paint sprayers. All right, so the next thing is price. And there will only be certain things that I discuss the home right simply because I don't have it here and I can't show it to you, unfortunately. With that being said, I'll go from least expensive to most expensive. The home right Finish Max sprayer, typically you can get for around 60 to $80. This model Graco, the 360 DSP, I've seen anywhere from 130 to uh, say $160 depending on where you buy it or what kind of sales or any discounts you can have. These tend to go on sale quite a bit. I actually think pay, I paid uh, $135 for mine um, and I got it on sale at Home Depot. The Rockler comes in around $150. Rockler products also go on sale very, very often. So you can usually pick these up for a little bit less than that, but if you were to buy it online today from Rockler, it would be 150 bucks. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare the two sprayers that I actually have in the video in a little more detail since I can show you. So this right here is the Rockler HVLP. Um, a few of the features real quick that I really like about it, it does have this little handle on the top, um, so it makes it really nice. You can hang it up when you're done and you clean it and everything. Um, that's one feature that I really like. I also like the ability to take the hose that comes with it and that hose simply plugs into here in the back and it stays in there very, very, very well. So um, that's real nice. If you just wanna take this, go re re uh, refill it with paint, you can just disconnect it. There's no cables, no cords, nothing like that. So that's a great feature about it. And then you have a couple different settings from this knob right here where you can go vertical or horizontal. Then in the back here, you have this little knob that adjusts the amount of spray that is actually coming out of the gun. Body itself, it's, it's a little large, uh, but it's not unmanageable. It is very, very, very light. Um, the power switch for it is located right here on the front. And it does have this little system here on the body that allows you to store your hose. And that makes it really handy when you're putting it away. It goes into a nice, uh, fairly small space. Now, the Graco is a little bit different in terms of the actual operation. So as I stated with the Rockler, you simply would pour the paint or the finish into this and be done with it. Basically, you turn it on and you start spraying because uh, that gun is operated on air. The Graco is an airless sprayer. It requires a few more steps that you have to take, one being priming the actual system itself. 
So I'll, sh I'll show you all of that here as I go through a little demonstration. The features that I really like, I really like the weight and how it feels in your hand. Now, it is a little bit heavier than the Rockler. I would say it's very comparable to the Home Right sprayer that I had, but it just feels really nice in your hand uh, when you're using it. Uh, obviously, when you do fill this up, it does get a little bit uh, more cumbersome and a little bit more heavy, um, but it's not unmanageable. And I just used this to spray my entire shop and the results were outstanding. The feature that I definitely like about the Graco sprayer the most, since it is an airless sprayer, the paint does not have to be thinned. That's a huge difference to me compared to the Rockler because with the Rockler and the Home Right, you have to thin the paint. Now, you don't have to thin anything like polyurethane um, or some kind of finish like that, but you, you do have to thin the paint. This you do not. So real quick, I wanna show you the way that you fill this reservoir and get it prepped for use. So this entire body comes off the bottom simply by turning it. And for this demonstration, I'm just gonna use um, some water because I just recently uh, did my initial cleaning on this. And I say initial cleaning on this because when I prime this, you're gonna see a bunch of white paint coming out of the gun into this. So this is actually the next step in my cleaning process. Now you can just screw this back on. Now what you have here on the side is this little valve. And this little valve is important once you're getting it ready to prime. And I'll show you that here in just a second. It just has a little lid that pops off uh, just like that. And I'll show you what that's used for here. As you can see, the water is not all the way to the top, right? So the first thing you have to do is you squeeze this bag I don't know if you can hear that air. That's pushing all the air out of the bag. And that's what this little reservoir here is for. You push it until you get that reservoir filled about halfway. Once that reservoir is pull, filled about halfway, you just close that cap. Earlier, I mentioned the priming feature. So the first thing that you have to do is you've put this so it is pointing down. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna squeeze the trigger. And this is gonna be an opportunity for you to hear just how loud this machine is. Now, as I said before, you're gonna see some of the paint that's still left in the system. That's coming down. This water will be used to flush out the system and then I'll put mineral spirits in it and spray it through all that good stuff. So um, once it's primed, then you just turn it to on to spray and you wanna prime it for about five to seven seconds. Uh, a lot of times I'll actually even turn it over um, while I prime it. I don't know if it really makes a difference, but um, works for me. Now that we've got it primed, before we actually spray it, I wanna talk about the tip real quick. So this here, you can turn to make it horizontal or vertical spray pattern. And then this tip here is where you can adjust whether or not it's gonna be the actual paint stream or it's just gonna be a single stream. Now, the reason it has the single stream option is because if you get a clog while you're spraying here, all you have to do, turn this nozzle, and that's how you clear any sort of clog or whatever that you have. Now, that's not very loud at all, and it also only is going while you're actually using the system. And then that's on the high setting. This is on the low setting. So low, high. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna talk about specific categories, four specific categories, where I'm gonna talk about all three guns. Again, I don't have the home right here, but I do have a lot of experience with it, so I will talk about it. The first of those four topics that I wanna talk about is finishes. Um, I will say that I have not sprayed any finishes such as polyurethane or spar urethane out of the Graco. Um, I don't know if I ever will, but we'll talk about that more at the end. Um, I will say that the Rockler is definitely my go-to um, sprayer for finishes. After that, I would say probably the Home Right. Again, I don't have the experience spraying it out of this, so I can't speak for that. I will tell you the differences between this and the Home Right. The Home Right, I got a lot more clogs. Um, and again, a lot of that's partially my fault, probably because I didn't do a good enough job cleaning the gun if I used it from paint to stain or to polyurethane or whatever. This does a excellent job 
at laying down a really nice clear coat once you get used to using it. And it's really nice to be able to adjust the amount of flow that comes out with this wheel. And you can even do it like on the fly. If you're watching it, you think it's too thin, you can increase the flow. If you think it's too thick, decrease the flow and just keep going. Um, it's very, very nice. It's, I've had excellent, excellent results spraying finishes with the Rockler. Next category is gonna be paint. And hands down, 100%, I will give it to the Graco. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal paint gun uh, for the price. I can only imagine what some of their, you know, more expensive options, what kind of stuff you'll get out of those. Um, the only downside to this is the small bag that you end up having to fill fairly often if you're doing a big job, such as painting the walls in your house. Um, but they do have other models where you can get uh, longer. You might even be able to upgrade this one to get the longer one and that'll help. To me, it's totally worth it. The reason why this one takes the cake is honestly because you do not have to thin the paint. That is such a big time saver when you need to paint a lot, not having to thin it, and it's consistent every time, as opposed to if you're thinning the paint that goes in here, after a while, you'll just kind of start winging it, and sometimes it's a little thinner, and then you'll notice it comes out differently. It sets on the product or project differently. Um, so it's, it's really nice to not have to thin anything. My second choice for paint, again, would definitely go to the Rockler. Uh, it does a very good job. It really kind of just boils down to um, how well you thin your paint. If you did it too thin, it's a little more difficult to deal with. Um, if you did it too thick, obviously it's not gonna come out very much. So practice uh, thinning the paint. There's instructions in all the manuals. And then obviously the third choice uh, would have been my home right sprayer. With that being said, I did have a lot of success uh, spraying uh, paint with the home right sprayer. I used it for about two years before I switched to anything. Um, I did have good results, but in the order, Graco, Rockler, home right. So the third category is gonna be cleaning. And if you're anything like me, I have a very bad habit of not cleaning my products right after I get done using them. So generally these will sit for quite some time uh, before I finally get around to cleaning the paint out. I think the Graco is probably easiest to clean for me because there's not a lot of parts to clean. Uh, you literally just take off this bottom unit here and you clean this top portion. You can throw the bag away if you decide you don't wanna keep it uh, or you can rinse it out and reuse it. Um, and then you just have to take the tip out, run some water through it. When you're done, go outside, prime it, spray some water through the system. After you've sprayed the water through it, you can just throw some mineral spirits in the bag, spray the mineral spirits through for just a few seconds to get it into the system, and then I like to store it turned upside down. And that's some advice that was given to me by Graco after I bought it and I had a problem after the first time. I thought that I cleaned it out really well and it turns out that maybe I just didn't. Um, and so then I went back and did the process that they told me and it worked great. So super easy to clean, five minutes, you can be done. Rockler also very, very easy to clean because there's not a lot of parts. You take off this bottom piece here, you've got this that extends down into the cup. You've got a retainer or a seal basically uh, inside there. You pull that out, you run water through the system. You can take off this front piece here. Uh, the only thing that's a little more difficult with this is you know there's some small holes up here in the front and they get clogged with paint. And they're a little bit more of a pain in the butt. I think the less uh, items that I have to kind of dig out with small pointy objects, the better. Um, so this does have a few of those, but they are not uh, difficult to navigate, especially, like I said, if you're cleaning it right after. Um, the home right was the most difficult to clean, um, in my opinion, because there was so many parts. And I think that's why I just really kind of let it go to crap over two years. And I used it for paint, polyurethane, and stain. So you can imagine it, it looked really, really bad, which is why I ended up throwing it away. The fourth category that I wanted to discuss was the noise. So you heard the noise generated by the Graco. Not loud, it's only going on as you're pulling the trigger. There is no residual noise. So to be fair, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Rockler so you can hear the noise for that. That is a constant noise that is always running when you're using the Rockler unit. Um, I would say that this is definitely the loudest, uh, the Rockler. 
The quietest is the Graco, and in the middle is the home right. The home right is actually kind of a combination between these two. On the home right, everything is built into the gun. So it looks like this, but has a head unit on top that is the compressor. And when you depress the trigger, it activates that compressor. When you release the trigger, the compressor will eventually stop. So from top to bottom, quietest, home right would be second, Rockler would be third. Out of these three sprayers that I just discussed, if I had to give one to be my favorite that I would recommend the most, I would say probably the Graco. The reason why I'm gonna give it to the Graco is because I don't spray finishes as much anymore because I'm trying to use less and less polyurethane, spar urethane, things like that. Um, I prefer wipe-on finishes now, so I don't find myself using the Rockler nearly as much. Um, so for paint, because it is my favorite paint sprayer, I definitely would have to give it to the Graco. Now, to be fair, if you are somebody that does both spray a lot of paint and a lot of finishes, or you want to be able to spray both in one gun, then I would have to recommend the Rockler. And I, again, I cannot speak for how the Graco sprays finishes. I'm sure it does very well. I just haven't done it yet. So if you're somebody that likes to do both, the Rockler is an excellent choice. It does both very, very well. Um, there is a little bit more of a learning curve, and yes, you have to thin the paint, but again, it does a very, very good job, and it should suit all of your needs. If you're somebody that's on a real big budget, a home right is a great gun as well. All three of these guns do very, very well, but if I was to rank them in my top to bottom, Graco, then the Rockler, then the home right. A couple more side notes before I let you go that have to do with spraying your finishes. What I will say is if you've never done it before, as soon as you actually do it, you're gonna appreciate it a lot more. The results that I've gotten spraying both finishes and paint uh, are far superior than anything I've ever tried to do with a brush. You'll never get the brush marks and you will have a much, much cleaner polyurethane or spray finish using a sprayer once you get good using it. Something I would always recommend in an effort for you to get good using it, when you get one, don't rush home, throw a bunch of paint or finish in it and then just start painting your project for the first time. What I like to do is take water, put it in the system, learn that spray pattern, adjust it till I feel like enough is coming out. You can do it on the concrete, you can do it on a piece of cardboard. Obviously, if you're doing paint, you don't wanna do that on the concrete. Um, but if you use water, you can spray it on just about anything. It'll give you an idea of how wide your fan is. Um, so just practice with it a little bit. And after you do that a couple of times, you're gonna get a really, really good idea of just how you need to use it. I promise you that once you use it, you will almost never wanna do things by hand again. All right, everybody, that's it for this week's video. I hope you were able to find some useful information. As always, if you have any questions at all, please send me an email, um, leave it in the comments section below and I will answer it. Or if you're not following me on Instagram, go check me out there, at Ben's Woodworking. Feel free to send me a DM. I answer just about every single message or comment that I get on a regular basis and fairly quickly. So if you ever have any questions about this video or anything else, I'd be happy to answer it. As I stated earlier, and like always, I will leave some affiliate links down below uh, should you choose to purchase one of these items and or you just wanna learn more information about it. So that's gonna do it for me in this one. I really look forward to the next video. I will see everybody then.